your host, Trey Stone. We're about to tap in with this new Rocco Session interview. Shout out Rocco Santana. Let's get it. Santana, per usual, as for those that have had a following of yours truly, I used to be, of course, a you know, very, very, you know, affirmative YouTuber on a daily, but of course, with my transition on the music side, but of course, this is, as I like to call it, the pilot before it really, really takes off. It's an idea that schemed off of, for those that follow me on IG, where I basically take, you know, artists and moments musically that I like and feel very impressed by it and I like to acknowledge. So this is an opportunity for us to take creatives as well, not just in the music field, but to give some insight into what they're doing and how, you know, basically we can make these moments in these sessions very more vulnerable, very more personable. And just, you know, for the audience out there, for you guys to engage as well. So obviously, because this is not just an interview with yours truly, of course, this is of course my brother, someone that I am very highly to. Of course, this is not not only just you know one of one of Jersey's own, but of course, in in all like respect, a, re a really good friend here. Of course, none other than Trey Stone. What's happening? What's, what's going on, my G? It's good, on, good to have you here. Now, yes, before sir. obviously we get started, if you guys want to follow us, and if you have any curiosity or any questions, or you like, of course, this content here, obviously give a thumbs up or share the video, especially get feedback because feedback is important. We highly appreciative of it. Mm -hmm. And if you do want to follow us on our accounts, we will happily even link, link it below as well. But obviously I'll tell you mine's where, you know, Twitter and Instagram is the same with at Rocco underscore Santana. Um, Trey as well has his social media accounts you can follow as well. Instagram, Twitter, I am Trey Stone. All lowercase. All, all stone. No cap. Exactly. So, <laughs> of course, before we get started, how you feeling, my guy? I'm good, bro. I'm all, all good? Yeah, man. Like, 2020, man. Oh, That's all I can say. <laughs> this, 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 was, this was triggering away that bullshit. <laughs> get, the, get that fucking, get that motherfucker out of here, yeah. man. 20, 2020, man, just, just really been a, a, I think it has affected everyone in unexpected fashions, but in regards to what we're talking about tonight, I th not even a thing. This was definitely a pivotal point for me, if I was to say so myself. I don't like giving myself credit at all, but I can give myself credit in the aspect that I made the best current content for me thus far, 100%. All, all, all applause to that, man. All, yes, all applause for, the, for those, obviously, that, are, that haven't been on the following of Tra Trace journey as a, as a music artist he had for years been basically just putting music on soundcloud and myself obviously discovery because i've always been a fan of the dude and we've always known each other even throughout throughout the years it's just obviously momentum picked up around like late 16 17 where we frequently had talked to each other a lot and really kind of the momentum and the build-up of his project from a glass that that's out now now obviously what we're going to be doing with rocco sessions that we like to take it to three alternatives because with a story there's of course three points there's obviously a beginning, there's a middle and an end, but we're gonna do it, of course, the Rico session style. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna talk, we're gonna make it into the momentum of basic of basically the person, mm. the artist, the universe. Mm. So that's what we're gonna be doing on this show, whether it's with an artist, whether it's musically or what they do on their fields, is we focus on the artist, the person, and the universe. Because I feel like it is important that in this world, we build our own creative universe and our own. So, obviously, for that, we're gonna start off with obviously our very first in <laughs> in this in this bright obsession, this pilot with, of course, the artist. So, so what we could do, Trey, is it's easy for those that look and be like, "Wow, Trey Stone, that sounds very mature." But for those that may not be aware out there. Was there a version before Trey Stone? Many versions. <laughs> <laughs> many, 
many versions. Um, <clears throat> I started making music when I was six years old. Not to sound cliche, because I know that's pretty much what all artists. Because you know how that should be. Yeah, like oh, I started oh, writing when I was three, nigga. Yo, I, was, I, was I started writing when I was three. That's what, that's like, what I took my candy. Yeah, shit like, like, <laughs> nah, like I really the first beat I I can tell you right now the first beat I ever wrote to was I'm Millie. I was not, no, I've been writing songs since I was six, but the first beat I ever wrote to, like, Top officially, Top Top was right Little Wayne, I'm Millie. And I re I don't know if you remember Little Wayne, Jay, I don't know if it was an unreleased version, mm -hmm. but Dre, Jay dropped the, um, I Billy. Yeah, the Billy remix, right? And I was corny, and I was like, I'm gonna drop I Trilly. So, <laughs> I, I can, I literally can spit it, but I'm not gonna spit it, because it, like, that shit was so trash. Like, it, <laughs> I, it, it was just bad. But I um, started getting super, super, super into writing poetry when I was seven. I used to steal my mom's jewelry when I was a kid to the girls that I went to school with. So to all those girls that went to North Dover and uh, North Dover, yeah, North Dover from kindergarten to fourth grade, all y'all had my mom's jewelry. But it was from Claire, so it wasn't nothing big. But I got my ass beat one time because I stole one of my mom's. <laughs> I stole one of my mom's uh, bracelets, and that shit was real as hell. Like it was like a bracelet that my dad. I believe my dad bought her for their uh, I, just a gift, a Mother's Day gift or something. It was a birthday gift, a Mother's Day gift or something. But I know I was in school, so it definitely wasn't her birthday. It was definitely uh, might have been a Mother's Day gift because it was like right before summer. Stuff started. So anyway, I um got into poetry. Started writing poetry. Then I, after poetry, that was from like six to maybe nine, or whatever. I Millie came out around that time. I wrote that Millie, and from there, I just always had a habit of listening, of writing songs from without listening to instrumentals. Because if you remember at this time, YouTube was YouTube has always been around, but you're nine years old, you don't have a cell phone to go site, to, like search in uh, I'm Millie instrumentals. So I had to do it the old school way and play I'm Millie while I'm saying, not really in there and so, like, you know what I'm saying, while the song is playing. So fast forward, I get a little bit older and I will, I'll leave like the, the little stuff out. But once I turn 16, that's when I officially started recording. And I was going under the alias Spoozy which is really uh, just, that's that's um, my family's nickname. And that's like a nickname my mom and dad gave me to play off of a nickname that I had, at my, which is actually my actual nickname. So anyway, gained that, I started doing music. I was in a, I was in a group and you know, the group we, we made like a lot of, we made a lot of noise, but I've always done music on my, on my own. And that's not to discredit anyone because everything that has led me to this point has definitely been beneficial in the content that I've created now because I feel like one of the biggest problems I had was me getting in front of myself. Um, so under Spoozy, if you guys are, if you guys have a, a good memory for all my fans that I do have, I dropped Tango and Cash Volume 1. That was a mixtape that I did with my younger brother. Shout out PNM. Um, and shout out to my nephew, Minnie. I love you. Um, he uh he and me were stuck in a stuck in my dad's house. We were living in Delaware. Anybody that knows Delaware, you don't you can't go and do anything. It's very boring area. It's nothing to do out there but but just get just just grow. You just get old and you just but it's comfortable. That's a pretty that's a pretty yeah. state, but it's not it's not it's not nothing for someone that's trying to make a name for themselves as far as like, you know, breaking a glass ceiling. Artists have done it, producers have done it, but it's 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 very hard, but it's you know, it's where you come from. So when I was there we did Tango and Cash Volume One. From there I did Cover Boy. If anybody definitely you I know you don't remember that because that's not even searchable on the internet. Um Cover Boy was a, a, a project of remixes of every song that was popping and that shit was so trash. It was so bad. Then from there, we went to me. That's when I, after I dropped Coverboy, I took my time for that summer because this was all in 2015. Um, I dropped a song um, called Take Your Time. 
And when I dropped this song, where um, me and my brother, we were sitting in the room, and he was just like, you got to hone this sound, because you sound good on this. He's like, you sound like, you know, you know, transparent. That's usually, that's usually what, what, what builds that test of character, man. You know, yeah. Someone having that foresight, you know? Yeah, so he told me, he said, you need to, you, this is the sound you need to test in, because this is not, this is... It's light skin, but it's like, you know, <laughs> I mean, I don't want to say it, but it's a light skin sound. It was a light bro, skin bro, sound. Before you even said that shit, somebody was ready to tap in. Yeah, like, yeah, that, that shit like, was light this, skin as hell. Because if anybody remembers, that song was like the song that got the most, like, I, I got the, out of any song that I ever dropped, and mind you, in the summer of 2015, I dropped over 60 songs. I dropped, no, I dropped over 50 songs, and it did nothing for me. It made people know that I was doing music by myself at this point, but it didn't crack any you know, it didn't make anybody want to pay attention because I feel like this was the ascension time of, I don't want to say mumble rap because that's disrespectful because they're not mumbling, but that sound, like this was the, this was the break of Uzi, Thug, Future was already popping, but Future wasn't yeah. Future that we know, he wasn't, he wasn't March Madness Future, this was, the, this was a different time, but this was around from what a time to be alive, like this was that time period. Tango and Cash was like an actual mixtape. Like it was a, a mixtape of like, the, the intro is a, a dip set, you know, instrumental. And it is available online on uh, that piff. Um, if you want to go listen to it, it's free online right now. You can go right. to that. Shout out to PNM. This was when he was a, a DJ, of course. He was going under the alias DJMS uh, for DJ Mainstream. Um, he, you know, we, and it, it was a great project. It was a solid project. I'm, that project, I won't talk down on, but I think the problem was we made an actual mixtape and the original songs that we did make, they did test, like they were, they, they got to people. I had like take from me. I had uh, shit was crazy, but it was a mixtape. It wasn't like the mixtapes we know now. It wasn't like a song, a mixtape full of original content. There was instrumentals like I re remixed. Um, Rich's Gangsta by Rick Ross, if you know that song. Rich's Gangsta. Yeah, I did that. That was my outro. It was called Taj Mahal. And that was one of my best best songs I've ever created. Again, go listen to Tango and Cash, because that was a strong project that I, I'm, I'm not mad at it at all. Um, so yeah, it didn't it didn't break, break any ground for me, but it did make people understand that I didn't know how to write music. So after that, 2016 comes, and I... I was. This was when I was going through my first, uh, first breakup, like in my in like a first actual, not an actual relationship. Because to be told, to be completely honest with you, it wasn't an actual relationship. But it was the first time I went through heartbreak, and I made a song called "Going Too Far," and that song, for whatever reason, got numbers. And just to clarify, the numbers I'm talking about are not numbers that you know. People are looking at like, oh, like, you know, they're, it's humbling for me because any song that I drop that does a thousand plays in one day, like, that's, that's big. You know what I'm saying? Especially when it's on SoundCloud. So after that, um, I was in a group. Then after I, I exited the group, um, I went on a hiatus because I was, I'm not the kind of artist that can create just to create. I have to live through shit to create. I can't give you like a fake story. My my method is a lot more calculated than just getting in a booth and just saying bullshit. Now, mind you, I've done that before and I'm good at it, but it's not, in, in, in my head, when I look at me and I listen to me, it's not what I wanna hear for myself. So if I can't get in the car and listen to a project like in my me time, or if I can't just like be working out or walking somewhere or anything, and I can't be at work and I got my earbuds in and I'm just I can't listen to it. I did something wrong, and that's what led me up to this point. So yeah, the Spoozy alias that was definitely a moment for me because we, you know, for all intents and purposes, everything that I did during that time period was very, very. It got it. It, it did create something. It made people understand that I am an artist. I'm good at being an artist, and like. You know, those are moments that I'm not gonna get back, but we're here now. So, to answer the question, well, I don't, you didn't even ask it, but <laughs> with the alias switch, Spoozy to me was something that I felt like content-wise I outgrew. Just based off the name, you can hear it, Spoozy. 
Like, it sounds good, though. I mean, I don't think anybody... I, and still to this day, I don't think anybody really calls me Trey. They don't call me Trey. They call me... But it's, but it's definitely that shook to wear for yourself. It's like when you look in the mirror, and even though it's cliche to look at yourself and see you, yeah. it's like you looked at Spoozy and said, I'm not Spoozy anymore. Yeah, I'm it's Trey not Stone. me. Yeah, and I, I made that decision last year. Um, and the reason why I got it is because I was, when I, was, I was living in Colorado for the winter last year. And anybody that's ever been to Colorado, you'll understand that that's so much space to just think. All you're doing is thinking out there. And I heard this saying that a rolling stone grows no moss. And it means like something that doesn't sit still will never get like the debris of like dirt and like shit on them. Because if you're always moving, you're always growing. And it to me was just like, you know, that meant like, if I keep doing what I'm doing, if I keep making moves, I'm gonna be a stone. Like I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm that stone. And Trey, of course, comes from my, from my, from my first name. It's the first three letters, but those, you know, those three letters were are very important to my family because number one, I'm, it's a just a traditional thing for my family to have those letters, in most cases. But um, it just if. I don't know why it just felt right. Spoozy, I don't know why I had to work for that name. I don't know why. Like, I, I did. It wasn't easy to come to that point. I was just like, Spoozy. I wasn't even just Spoozy first. I was Spoozy Havoc. And it was it, it was just like I had to try. It was just like, Spoozy, Spoozy. But then when I did Trey Stone, of course people didn't like it. Like, I know a lot of people that told me, like, you shouldn't do that. But, like, it grew because of where we are now. So, you know. I'm glad I did it because I believe I, I, I believe that it has, it, it has made me an artist that is to be taken more serious. And just for business sense, I think it's more marketable, like, just to be honest. With exactly. You. And with, with everything that you counterpart to when we're recapping, the mm -hmm. question that I think is essential to ask is, if Spoozy and Trey were in a room together, how do you think those two would be able to complement each other's style and mm -hmm. look at each other now and, and say, Wow, like like even though we feel like two different people, it's we can still coexist because, in a way, it's like even though it it, it doesn't it's not Spoozy anymore, it's Trey Stone. Mm -hmm. I think you always have to give the homage to Spoozy because it's like you influenced yourself in a way. Like you had mm -hmm. to find that growth to elevate there, but you couldn't have did that without experience Spoozy. Yeah. So how do you think those two would be able to coexist in a situation and look at each other and say, "Wow." Spoozy was more, damn, that sounds so, that was a great question. <laughs> Let me just say that. Um, <laughs> Spoozy was more angry. I feel like at that time I was, Spoozy was, I, this is going to sound so bad. I feel like, <laughs> no, nah, not bad. But you, know the, they, you know they got to prepare when it's like, yeah, it's not, to be bad. <laughs> no, not bad in a, not bad in like a way of like, I might regret saying this. It's bad in the sense of like, I'm, it's kind of like self-reflection. Mm -hmm. I feel like I was trying to be something that I wasn't. Mm -hmm. for, the um, kid, for the kids at home, bro. Yeah. Feel, like, that, feel that shit. <laughs> I feel like I was don't, trying... Don't turn. Don't be like... Hey, yeah. Like, hey, I, yeah, I feel like I was trying to be an artist that I wasn't capable of keeping. Like, when you hear... Again, when you hear the name Spoozy, you don't hear songs that you hear now, you hear like juvenile shit. I out if if Trey and him were if if we're speaking from third point, like a third person's view, and Trey is here and Spoozy's there, Trey is gonna look at Spoozy and just be like, you're a fucking mess. <laughs> like, like, like you're a fucking mess. Like, dude, like what the fuck? Like, no, don't get me wrong. I've had great moments with like being being that you know, that version of myself. I, I experienced a lot of things that I don't, you know, I don't think I've ever expected. Like my first official show, shout out to Mizza. Um, if anybody doesn't know Mizza, you know Mizza. Mizza's from Willem Bro. Shout, shout out to Willem Bro. 
Um, shout out to E and Me too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If they see this shit, yeah. just, just know, bro. It's Give complete, me your complete, bro. complete, uh, complete. complete. <laughs> we Willembro artists would not be Willembro artists unless it was for E and Me. I'm saying that to the camera. You. All you motherfuckers is trying to act like y'all did this shit first. So act like you didn't see those posters dude, and they left them on the you, high. If you were nah. looking at shit, bro. Now, e and Me. You might, like, all, anybody from Willem Brown, I don't give a fuck who you are. You definitely weren't who no. you think you no, are. Don't act like you ain't seen them posters, bro. Y'all Be seen them posters. Yeah, because. Rockin' that step back. Yeah. E-M-E. <laughs> I don't even, we're not even gonna say names, but yeah. a, lot, a lot of people, a lot of people's lives were affected during that time period on Facebook and MySpace. Oh, but, shit. so, yeah, but if, if I, we were sitting in a room, I just feel like Trey Stone would look at Spoozy and just be like, you're you're not you're you're not you're not you're not you you're not being you like this is not you're still figuring out who you are but you need to get your shit together like you need to take this shit more serious you need to take yourself more serious so yeah I, yeah I definitely think he would look how would they coexist when you say that do you mean by just verbally or do you mean by just like, ver yeah verbally oh like, yeah not, not in an artistic way oh yeah so no because like, I could I don't I don't know how arti yeah. artistically yeah. there's still clearly if you listen to certain songs yeah. from my past you're going to hear certain clearly I'm I, I still make the same kind of music it's just a more polished version yeah so there yeah just a more polished version that's what that, that's where I can put it. Yeah, great, great, great intel, man. Yeah. Great, great intel. Mm -hmm. I think I think they're both this is somewhere. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully agree. Hopefully mm -hmm. agree. So of course, of course, guys, as we're as we're gonna be doing, and we're gonna be having our intermissions for these parts. So of course, that was part one. I believe. See, I'm over here have to keep keep my memory. I, I believe that was that was for the artist, right? Mm -hmm. So obviously, when we when we come back, we're gonna be tapping into more so the person of Trey and mm -hmm. kind of getting into his intel of just things that you know we can kind of connect with and hopefully for you guys as well. So. Of course, stay tuned. Rocco Sessions. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. Of course, to Rocco Sessions. Of course, once again, with our guest here and our first very pilot, Mr. Trey Stone. Yes, sir. I'm feeling all right, man. Yes, sir. Of course. So that was, of course, us diving into the first part of it being the artist. It was a great discussion there. So what we're going to do now, we're going to transition into part two, which is now, of course, the person. So as far as the ideal of trying to look into the personas of yourself and those versions of yourself as an artist, I feel as a person, a lot of people they they always look for those quality questions of what makes you you with like a lot of the, a lot of those cliche quotas. But I mostly look at it more so the question for me being for yourself mm -hmm. universally. How do you feel like another tray in this world can look to find that voice of more so not as far as like their talent or what they're trying to achieve, but how to make their situation to for yourself what you've dealt with. Because for someone else, they out there can find maybe try to try try to dealt with a lot of issues because especially with how 2020 has been. But the whole being for yourself is how do you think 2020 has shifted yourself as a person? And how do you think compared to how you've handled a lot as far as like on a personal level, whether it's built in relationships or foundations or for yourself, like just establish it in a way that for you, how do you think this year compared to most of yourself de developing as a, as a young adult to where you're at now, how do you think that persona separates from you comparing as an artist to as a person? And do you feel like it's more so you want to be satisfied with the version you're becoming or are you still feeling as if there's still a chip on your shoulder to be the version you know you can be? No, there's definitely, there's definitely, you know, with any, with, with growth comes from pain. So I'll say that I'm tired of my old self. I can tell you that on, uh, on an artist standpoint and a music standpoint, and I can tell you that they both, they both, like I'm, I'm I'm a human. I'm a I'm me before I'm my alias. But they do get along, but they're not that you Trey Stone can't be my regular life. Because this this game that we're in now, it's built off of characters. It's built off of people that are trying to be something 
thinking that they won't have any backlash for that. So I definitely am tired of myself when it comes to certain things with my personal life, just me as a person and artist wise too. But I can say that the first question you asked when you said, how could you were basically saying like, how could somebody find that, like find, like find the, that tray as far as like the things that make that person the way they are. Exactly. Oh, well that's exactly. just, that's just being true to yourself. Like I can tell you, I can tell you one of the biggest things with my hiatus when I stopped, stopped doing music, which was in 2000, I stopped recording music completely and I started learning how to write for other artists you know, you gotta, you gotta understand that when you're not doing something that's not authentic, it's going to have an expiration date. Exactly. And it's not going to be, f if, unless you just don't care about how you sound to the world, you're, you're going, it's going to come to a point where you're like, I can't keep doing this shit. And I think for what it's worth in 2020, especially when not even COVID, when it comes to music, the amount of loss and tragedy that we have, and not to say that those gentlemen or these people that we are losing from this game is because they're faking it. They're clearly not faking it, but any any the energy you and the energy you put into the universe, that shit will come back to you. So when I create, I always try to create in the aspect of who what will I like hearing this a year from now? And well well I be like I don't know. I it, it, that's a that's a very complex question. I don't, and I can tell you that I don't really think I have the answers all the way for that, as you can see. Which I think is as as counterpart to what you're saying. I think that's you know that's the best. That's honestly the the best way to kind of compliment your response because sometimes I think people try to reach out to give the perfect answer, but I think it's not even just from fur and of the audience. But I think mm -hmm. as a person, sometimes we have to really sit back with ourselves and realize. You don't have the answer, but that doesn't mean that you're wrong. Yeah, no. What it means is that you're taking the time to acknowledge it mm -hmm. and be forward. But what you said as well was very powerful is that 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 intuition and especially again with a lot of the loss that's been this year. I actually wanna wanna double in with, with that question, you know, because I know that's a very heavy subject as far as people losing and people being very sensitive about it. But for you, what I would ask is do you think at a point that there's a certain responsibility that comes from the persona versus the actual person and what they present? You and think how, they don't go together. They're not, they're not. And that's, a, that's, a, yeah. and, and please tell me more about that. That's something I've, I've always been curious of, you know, as far as like, I've always wondered that for somebody, do they sit and think, is that the responsibility? Hell no. And does it coexist? Hell so no. Definitely, definitely like give me more. I, I, it, I, I'm definitely interested. In I have a chip on my shoulder when it comes to the fact that we support bullshit. And I'm part of that. I can tell you that I listen to a lot of shit that I, it's a guilty pleasure. And I can tell you that from personal, from my own personal experiences, I won't go into detail with, as far as like relationships I have with people that are connected to certain people that a lot of people know, there is, I, unless you guys will do it in the comment section or somebody will come to me after this, after we, and, may, hope, and maybe if you can tell me if I'm wrong, I don't think we've ever had a artist, and I don't even think it's possible to have an artist that can do do something out of their character and then not affect their personal life. I don't think that's possible. I don't think because it's going it's going to affect you in some kind of way. It may not kill you, it may not hurt you, but somebody's different forms of effect like there's different forms of effect. It could affect your the people around you to be like, yo, I'm not fucking with you. That that's not who you are. Like what the fuck? Or it can make people just not want to be around you. Like I don't I and I'm not saying that oh I'm gonna be the first artist. To do that like nah like that's not what i'm that's not what i do music for my music to me the the art that i create is a form of therapy because it's the only time when i'm not thinking about other shit when i'm recording i'm not thinking about other shit but my alias and and me as a human being do not go hand in hand because that you know i can i can be me and be fine 
Are they similar? Absolutely, because my music is real. I don't lie about anything. I'm not on songs talking. I'm not going to go into detail what I mean by like certain things I'm talking about because I don't want to offend anyone. But I do think people do need to start taking accountability for the shit that they're putting out there because if you're on a song talking about, you know, smacking somebody on every on every damn song you do, sooner or later, somebody going to come to you and try to smack you. They're going to test you. I don't want that shit coming to me, not because I'm not built for it, because I am built for it, because I was raised that way, but I'm not going to create content that's going to affect my personal life. I'm not. Maybe maybe if it, if it does affect my personal life, it gives, it gives uh, the things that I'm trying to connect with uh, solutions or closure or transparency on things that I want to solve in my personal life or give me some kind of like... Like I just said earlier, when I was talking about the song that I had going. I don't even know if I were talking about it, but I have a song going too far, and yeah, we th yeah we was touching on it. Just... Going too far was when I was talking about heartbreak. Like after I got done recording that, I can't tell you why, but I was not heartbroken no more. So it, but when it comes to that, when it comes to that shit, where we're like, this music shit ain't worth your life. It ain't worth yourself. It ain't worth it ain't worth you as a human being. Because once you start getting once you start becoming a character, you, oh man, that shit. Whew, I, I can't even finish that sentence because that it's sickening to me to watch people that I know that are not built the way they think they are built. Or maybe they are. You might be built like that, but there's somebody that can be more built like that than you. There's always somebody out there that can fight better than you. There's always somebody out there that can shoot better than you. There's always somebody out there that can sell drugs better than you. There's always somebody that's going to look at you as a target. And I don't want to be looked at as a target because, number one, I want to live. I want to see life. I want to see old age. And I can tell you, going back to the question when you asked me about how them two would, how Spoozy and how Trey Stone set into a room, Spoozy didn't didn't see old age. He didn't see 40. He didn't see 30. He didn't see 50. He didn't see retirement. He didn't see Miami in my 60s, fat as hell, high cholesterol, might die of a heart attack, but his, his children are comfortable. His wife is set for her life and shit. But I got a son. Like I got a kid. Like I got I have like a I have a responsibility. Shout out to Poos. Just shout out to Lil Poos, Baby Stone, just, just, Young Poppy, Lil Pig. Beautiful thing, man. Beautiful thing. My son, like, yo, like what I do I want my son looking at me like he knows who his dad is, but on TV he's like, no, because he's gonna start, he's gonna start like talking to me like, yo, like, yo, you Yo, dad, where my gun at? Like, you know what I'm saying? And that's not to dis that's not to discredit people who do that because again, if that shit is the truth, I'm listening to it. But at some point, bro, like, when are you gonna like what like there? I don't think we've ever had an artist that has had that who has put that shit into the universe and it has not came back to them. I don't think it's possible. So to to actually, because I think this is a great way to kind of end off um, on part two. A very, a very uh, a great, great question that, that I that I wanted to ask is mm. when we look at the genres and and this is not us to to try to speak on how people should pass away or anything like that. That's not no, at all what we're doing. Absolutely but not. Let's be let's just be honest, guys. We're grown. We're civilized. We can have a communication, but death is something that is a sensitive subject. Right. But what I wanted to ask is. When you look as well as outside of COVID and a lot of a lot of unfortunate, you know, circumstances for people that have lost, mm -hmm. there's been some artists that have not died but have been shot. Mm -hmm. And most times out of ten, it's usually in the hip hop community. And this is not us trying to speak on the hip hop community or anything. But what I want to ask is the direction of moving forward because unrealistically, we know how the game is. We know how savage people are. We know that. Anybody, if they look at you as a hit and lick, anything is game. But my question I want to ask is for you, how do you think translating to what you were speaking on? How do you think as far as the approach when you look at other genres that you don't see those circumstances happen? And this is not us speaking into existence for those genres. But how do you look at it in the future of how that approach can be as far as do you think artists should really hold themselves a lot more being out there with with, with just, you know, just being in the open or 
how do you think there is not better not saying a perfect or better approach but what's the smartest way and the smartest example of examining the game so that way you could protect they can protect themselves so they can avoid those scenarios don't carry yourself as a target don't stay ready my father always taught me this shit and this is something I think he told me. I'm going to pause you. He told me to say he learned it from T.I. It was either in a song or an interview. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. I come from a cloth of certain men, certain people. I won't even say men because it could be women, women too. Where if I walked into a booth and I wanted to rap about selling drugs, from the aspects of another person, or if I wanted to talk about seeing people, knowing people getting killed and shit like this, the OGs of my life, the people that I grew up from, I have the green light to do so. And to be completely honest with you, I've been told to do it. I've been told several times, yo, you know your voice, bro? You should start making content like that. Cause you, yo, what the fuck? No, what the fuck? Like, yo, you asking me to walk out there with like, like basically just, you're asking me to- It's like that awkward pose in the room, like- Yeah, like, what the, the fuck? It's like that like, scene in the boondocks when it was like, when, when uh, the members was like, no, what the fuck? Like, yeah, like, yeah, like, what the fuck? Like, why would I, why would I do that? But, uh, but yo, don't put, don't, excuse me. If you're not built for it, don't talk like you are. That's pretty much it. Like, if you know you're not, if you know you don't want to die, stop talking about killing people. If you know you don't want to get shot, stop talking about guns. If you know you don't want to get robbed, stop posting your money and shit everywhere, every time you're on social media. Like, that shit ain't real. Like, I think that's my biggest disconnect when it comes to being number one. Because when you're number one, you gotta, I'm not saying you gotta take that role, but from what I'm watching, because we live in such a beautiful age where everything is transparent. Everything is in our face. We can, they are telling us to our face, like, yo, you will, you can get killed for this shit. There are people that will hate you so much for the success you have that they want to see you dead before they see you keep going. And when it comes to, when it comes to artists having some self accountability, you don't got to stop what you're doing. You don't got to stop it. You don't. But do you have the security to keep doing it? Can you go to a store with no security and not get murdered? Can you go to a nightclub and not get, you know what I'm saying? Like, can, can you avoid those things? Are you, can you go into a, a, a an environment, a location where you're not looking over your shoulder, making sure like somebody's not trying to harm you? Like, it's just, it, it's literally just asking yourself, do I want the, do I, can I, can I accept this and can I accept what comes from it? And if you can't accept what comes from it and you know you can't, just don't do it. Just don't do it. And it, it's as simple as one, two, three, whatever you put in the universe, that shit will come back to you. So I think a lot of people not even just artists, I think people just need to start realizing because this can go into certain, a lot of different aspects of life. If you talk about, you, if you talk about certain just negative shit, yo, that shit is going to come back. And I can tell you firsthand, bro, that that shit has happened to me. That shit has happened to me. I've talked so bad or so negative in life that I've come to a point, not, I've came to a point before where I've lost every fucking thing because the energy that I was putting out to the universe that bro that and I, I can tell you firsthand I ain't built to lose everything I got because I worked too hard but yeah it's just self-accountability bro but you got to remember at the end of the day like this shit is a this shit is a it's it's not a talent show anymore it's a popularity contest mm. it's not like and I'm not saying that in a corny way because I don't want nobody to think like I hate like I hate 
the, the, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, like, like, the conversation, like, yeah, this like, man this train. young old ass, this, 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 yeah, nah. hip, this hip hop, yeah, I'm not like a D boy walking around with my, with my, <laughs> with my fucking, oh, uh, the, all the, all the sound club rappers, like, oh, sh- oh, shit, yeah, 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 like, I'm oh, not, hide your, hide your flows, bro, hide your I'm shit. not like, support your local hip hop, like, yo, this the real hip hop, like, <laughs> I'm not, no, I'm not doing that because, yo, I love all that shit. I love all music. I'm telling you, I love all that shit. But I love it more when those people can do that and nothing comes to them because they're they have the security of knowing that like I can do that shit, but they're carrying themselves as businesses. They're not carrying themselves as artists. They're carrying themselves as a business. And that's what this shit is at the end of the day. Motherfuckers need to stop treating this industry like it's like reality, bro. This shit ain't real. This shit ain't real. That shit, then you may love it, but that shit is not going to love you back. That goes with the drug game. That goes with the rap game. That goes with anything in this on this fucking planet. You can't take this shit with you. Why are you going to put yourself into a position where you can get murdered or arrested or, or shot at for shit that at the end of all this shit, you can't take this money with you? You can't take this shit. So you just gotta you you just gotta start realizing that none of like this industry is not real. But it's fun though. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's fun. It's fun to watch. The inter- it's entertaining and shit. And that again, it's entertainment. It's not reality. It's entertainment. You know what I'm saying? So like me personally, you'll never hear content from me that I can't listen to and that I can't listen to myself. Because you know what I'm saying? Like that's just me personally, that's just not, that's just not wavy with me. Like I can get, I've now don't get me wrong, I've been on songs and I've lied before and said shit that wasn't true. But, <laughs> but it's not, it's it's not. It, again, it was lie. It was they were the smallest lies, bro. They could have just been about fucking like just fucking a girl or some shit. But like major shit, like. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, I'm not lying about that. Like, yeah. something as simple as me saying that I hang around with motherfuckers like thugs or some shit. Like, I don't want to call them thugs, but like, I hate, but I do have people in my life that are like, you know, they come from a certain club. And I don't hang around them all the time because I ain't trying to be a part of that shit. And they know it because those are the real ones that's with you. Those motherfuckers are the ones that's going to tell you, like, yo, get the fuck out of here. Like, what the fuck are you doing here, bro? Like, why are you here? Like, you need to go. You don't <laughs> need to be here. Like, Fuck, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, it's just self accountability, bro. On, on everything, man. On everything. Just great intel. Mm-hmm. Just pure honesty there. But at the same time, it's caring for the young artists. Um, for myself, it's you know one of the things for me that I think is is really interesting because obviously I don't know how people will feel. You know, watching this and be like, damn, like that motherfucker rock with, and all of a sudden don't want to talk, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's like. I like the I like these type of sessions because they give the opportunity for the guests to really understand that I think what's lost in the art of interviews is that they're not interviews anymore. It's gossip bullshit, it's it's these intels, it's these ideas that people feed off of that to me should not influence the audience being engaged. It should be an actual conversation. But it's like we drive artists to this mind state mind state where it's like there is no accountability. It's like everybody, like you said, treats it like a popularity. And I think what's beautiful about the forecoming of why I built this structure of the artist, the person, and what we're going to tie into when we come back from the intermission is that we're going to lead to the universe being built. So if you now have your intel with, of course, Trey Spools and now heading into the actual person, when we come back from intermission, we will tap finally. We will be talking about the universe he's trying to build. We will talk about, of course, none, o- none other than the project he just put out from a glass house and potentially more. So please stay tuned and we'll be right back. What's going on, guys? Welcome back, of course, to Rival Sessions. We're here with our guest, Trey Stone, of course, you have been following us through our transition of building from the momentum of introducing the perspective of Trey, the artist, and as the person. So now we come to my personal favorite because I know the tone got a little serious, but that's what we love here. And again, please, if you have any comments or have anything you want to engage, again, we will leave, of course, just the at names in, in, in the bio, of course, where you can follow us if you have any questions or any comments. And again, if you love the content, Definitely either share, like, show love. And even if you don't like it, thank you for tuning in. But I, it'd be cool if you don't like it. You know what I'm saying? But, of course, 
Trey, it's been a great conversation. It's just been great, bro. I always like asking people how they're feeling because I think it, it really hits in tone because, you know, I think sometimes we get so far in that we got to really sit back sometimes and make sure that the people around us are good. So every time I'm asking, like, when, oh, yeah. when any of my guests are they good, it's because I got to make sure, make sure you're good. Bro, this is, sometimes it's not always yeah, good. Nah, too, so. no. <laughs> Motherfuckers get up and leave and be like, it's too much for me, y'all. I need to go smoke a blunt. <laughs> like, damn, bro. <laughs> that conversation got me crying for the bullshit. Yeah, nah, fuck but, that. Nah, I'm chilling, bro. Yeah, that's, that's, good that's great to hear, bro. So... It feel for some it may look like an overnight thing with this project, but I myself knowing the process and your eyes tell it all. <laughs> your eyes tell it all. Oh no! From a glass house, Man. so it's so easy for someone to ask the regular question: What inspired you? How did it happen? But I, I, I honestly wanna wanna ask this: the aftermath of from a glass house. Mm. Do you feel the aftermath? of it because it's so easy to talk about what inspired it and everything but i like to know the aftermath of it being out and what came along with yourself and everything to this point that you spoke about from the artist versions of yourself to the regular person now that you've had the aftermath of that project do you view that project to stand the way that it meant before you made it yes I was not expecting it. <laughs> I was not expecting it. I really was not. I can 100% tell you what you know personally because we talk off off of like, you know, camera and whatnot. But um, it clearly, and that, again, because I don't want to ever sound like I'm like this big ass artist. Like, well, dog. Listen, like, well, I'm not, because that's not me. See the water, it's that's like not me. Because I watch, I watch a lot of you niggas on interviews and y'all niggas be sitting with, with fucking y'all be set acting like that shit is uh Branson and fu- nah y'all you drinking he and just like, uh, like but yeah about to hit him with like this is a like butt. this is this is like this is December of 2020 <laughs> this is real time it's raining outside like this is not a fairy tale land Motherf- like, motherfucker sipping with sipping we're, water we're not you sipping know, liquor this is water you know motherfucking <laughs> mouth get dry like nah like we not trying to be cool like you know what I'm saying like I'm don't ever get it fucked up like I'm not. To, to go to kind of like try to start answering your question of course not in the aspect of it being like not it's not my breakout project as of right now it's not i mean it's not the clearly right right now it's not the project that's that's that motherfuckers do, I mean, you know what i'm saying like i won't lie people are you know what i'm saying people are hitting hitting me up like a lot of like a certain artists and shit like in a, not even and this is not a flex, not even just in America. Like, I have a lot of people from, like, Australia, Bel- like, Melbourne and shit, like, artists that, like, hit me up and be like, I might, like, I want to work with you. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, just, like, you know, it's, it's, but it's humbling, though, because it's just, like, I'm glad that I'm not getting big-headed from the response from it because I used to so much, like, get so fucking cocky because... Everybody told me I was so great and da 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 until like the numbers didn't do that. But yeah, for sure. I definitely feel like this is it's definitely not my first project because I can tell you right now, Tango and Cash 100% is my only project that I can honestly say stands the test of time because from Cover Boy to like, and this is not my first EP. Excuse me. I had um I did an EP with a producer from from Delaware. Um his name is Brett Coxie. Uh he's like a well he's like a well known producer in, in Delaware. Shout out Brett Coxie. Um and that did good numbers on SoundCloud, but I mean it clearly didn't stand the test of time and it definitely was maybe just wasn't some of my best and strongest work. But yeah, this EP for sure, because it even though it's only four songs, like these four songs have taken me like three years to create. Like, and it took me three years to create an EP that I made in two weeks. Like I wrote and recorded this in like two, maybe three weeks. And that's that's crazy to me because it's taken me like three weeks at a time to make a song because I'm like, again, like you, I go through real life shit. I got shit going out 
fuck like besides this music shit like i'm a normal person i go through like everyday shit i go through losses like motherfuckers gotta work you gotta pay bills you, gotta... <laughs> you know because 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 that, that's that's, Cause that's the shit that you know don't get highlighted because i'm not out here the calls and all the regular shit i'm not out here just living off the luxury of just being tra like tray and shit like i'm actually out here like a normal human being like you go and catch me out where i live like in public like i got a regular lifestyle you know what i'm saying and i'm a, and I'm a father you know what i'm saying like i got responsibilities Again, so shout out to that shout, shout out to little to p that. young poppy poos shout out to my boy shout, shout out but to i got responsibilities and it's just like you know i i got a like you know i have a family like i have a family that i'm trying to you know make strong like i have and we go through shit like we go through shit all the time so it's just like in the periods of me creating and releasing music um it could stop the process could stop because of real life shit but it makes the best form of art a hundred percent but yeah not to keep going off in a tangent <laughs> from a glass house i'm i'm a hundred percent proud of it bro like i'm not even trying to give myself a lot of credit but i'm very proud of it like i I'm gonna let you talk to you and get the but I'm, yeah, no, I'm I, very I, proud. No, of no absolutely, bro, and that's and that's a beautiful thing, especially for yourself as an artist. That you know, like you said, you know that that test of time and seeing so much of that time pass because mm -hmm. you worry for yourself. You know, you look and say, well, it's not even the question of you got it, but it's like, what is it that I'm trying to give? More importantly, mm -hmm. and for that process of making that EP and seeing how you came with those ideas, you came with the steps and the stools of how the momentum and the build whether it's a bridge or a chorus or a hook or just like a bar that centers in or is going to really hit the tempo or the tone i think those things really carry a lot of character and it builds to again those steps that it took as what we try to do in these sessions of elevating the journey from the artist to the person to that project yeah because from a glass house it's not just something that happened out the blue that was something that was blooming through the years Talking and it just finally found that that ground that it, now you look at it and you see the beauty of it because you appreciated the journey and I think that's that's the, the the at least for me what I took from what you said that I think really speaks itself and that's that's kind of where I, re I re personally want to talk about the project because a lot of people they say they, they love something but it's like you have to really explain it you don't have to be the music nerd or anything to kind of give that core feel but for myself, the, the thing that I that I love about the concept and themes of from a glass house is that it feels very it feels it still feels secretive, but it feels like it gives all the best versions of who Trey wants to be, mm -hmm. but who he is now. Yeah. It's like he doesn't have to try to pretend for what he's going for for all these songs. What is the motive? Every song has an intention of why he's he's starting this drop, why he's negotiating. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 something where, for myself, I, I noticed this with the with the loop of, of really the transition with those songs is that the mood really switches off, which coincidence the final song is called No mood. pun intended. You know, no pun intended, but <laughs> what I love is that, you know, from Stone Age to Wanted to, mm -hmm. um, uh, what, what was the name of the track? To, to Who Else? And then, of course, to, you know, the ending of it being Mood, is you really feel the momentum of different mood ranges. Like you really feel all of all of what a person really is trying to get together that sometimes it would take a whole album to do. It's like the EP managed to do that through four tracks. It's like you managed to get you managed to get hit the cocky version, but in a way that doesn't feel cocky. It's just hunger. But you also managed to get a man that is trying to approach a woman in a very approachable, sensual way. Mm -hmm. But it's relatable because it's it's like a conversation. Instead of, like, oh, I want that guy, you should be fucking with me. It's more so, like, why I should be fucking with you. Right. And what I'm willing as far as my standards. But then when you look at who else, it's going from a song of that to recognizing who's in front of you mm -hmm. and acknowledging that person's flaws, but your flaws. Mm -hmm. But how do we take those perfection of those flaws and make that the real beautiful core instead of making this sound romantic? It's still romantic, but in a way that's also heartbreaking. But sometimes it being heartbreaking isn't a bad thing. Sometimes it's the most poetic thing because it's the most honest thing. And that's the, sub the, that's the subtle things that I think really complements just whether it's the production, but shout out to the production here and to the producers. Oh yeah, especially. hell yeah. Shout out to um 
Damn, you got me making now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say my, my personal, my boy for the last. No disrespect to all three yeah, producers. No, no disrespect. Uh, to all of the producers, yeah. but just because we have a, a really close relationship. But yeah. shout out Palace for Stone for Stone Age. A hundred percent. Stone Age Universal coming soon. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Um, shout out to uh, Eros, who produced who else? Shout out to Fat Beautiful Man. Beautiful instrumental, by the way. Beautiful. Yeah, that, yeah. Like, Eros, you, you really did your shit. That was my favorite song that for is, a very long that time. Is, that instrumental is so beautiful, bro. That was so, like, that, like, it's, like, what's that instrument in the back, bro, that's just, like. That was, I, I, am I, it's the guitar you're talking about, it right? Is, yeah, yeah, that, that yeah. has to be the guitar. Like, Edit that out. No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to say that. No, I'm joking, bro. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> nah, keep that. Can we keep it that? Like keep that. Dumb oh, my gosh. <laughs> but, but I'm serious, though. And then last but not least, Mood, uh, mood as well. What what I what what I think especially the the biggest takeaway that for myself because I, I I like I'm gonna be honest y'all like especially like because I I listen to random songs on the regular like I listen to a lot of random things but if they talk about what have been the core projects for me that I've listened to very frequently just of the past few weeks and this is no it's no cap mm -hmm. it's either been Cuddy it's either been um, uh, this this lovely young woman named Sunflower Ari, her project that came out too late. Shout out Sunflower Ari, yo. Yes, yeah, yeah, shout out to it. Um, she, you will definitely in the future be seeing something on there, you know, foreshadow. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, this gentleman right here, because I, you know, it's not even obviously preparing for the interview, but I truly feel like, and in, in, with all respect, that there is a real sense of maturity. And I think you really found a way to bring the best of Trey Stone through these four songs. And I, I think, appreciate that. And bro. I think the most important thing about this project is that, to me, the most important standout concept that I took from it is how human it is. How vulnerable it is, but at the same time, how fucking Jersey it is. Yeah. I'm sorry. Selfishly, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Because myself, that's the thing that I feel like sometimes I will admit that I've missed sometimes when I listen to certain things is just knowing that it feels like home. Yeah. And I think that's what, I don't know if that was a main core for you, but I know for me, when I, when I really, really started getting this project and now I'm, I'm very familiar with it, it felt like home. And that was, so, that's a rare thing to get, especially for myself that I thought, I thought really, really stand out. So the question that I, I actually want to speak about with, from a glass house that, obviously what we spoke before on where it tests now for yourself with the approach of these songs mm -hmm. the thing that i that i've always been interesting in is that for yourself do you feel like with that aftermath you've had with this project and when you look at the ideas that these songs presented in itself how do you look at all that was built to create those songs and how do you take the fortune of yourself being as talented and being able to create those moments mm -hmm. does it feel real when you actually in real time listen to yourself compared to when you're in the moment making it and how does that how does that energy like can it separate being in the moment making it compared to really listening to it and being like no this is the real thing no you can't separate it because some of that because that's that's yeah, something no. that i i just i always Hell think is great no. about an artist is how do you how is that possible that's because, a current because like, it's a current Thing. Exactly, Those and are, that's something that to me I've always just wondered with an artist, like how, like yeah. can that be possible? Don't, well, for, first of all, uh, the EP was originally supposed to be called Mood. Then it was supposed to be called Mood from a Glass House, and then I said no. Uh, you can't. I I I personally can't separate it because those songs. The reason why I was gonna call it mood is because if I don't think I, if I if I accomplish one thing, I if I think I accomplish one thing, I would hope that the consumers of who are listening to it, shout out to all my listeners, um, that they all four sound like moods, like they all four sound like, they don't sound the same. Whereas the tempo of the beats, as far as like. Just like wanting and who else being a little bit softer than Stone Age and Mood, 
they all four sound like totally different songs. And that's just based off of the structure of how I wrote and approached those songs. But to answer your question, no, they're all, I can't separate, I, I can't listen to it as a consumer because it is super personal. It's super personal. Like it's, I can detail, I can literally tell you right now every line I wrote on that song and why. And I don't think they might want to know all those reasons because a lot of those motherfucking lines on some of those songs, chin checking a lot of you niggas, but <laughs> leave that for another day. But uh, yeah, like that, that is a person. That, that it's personal. It's a lot of personal shit on that project. Like it's sometimes it's too hard for me to listen to it because I'm just like fuck. Like, and I'm again, I'm not saying this because it's the greatest project ever. I'm saying it because I'm a human being. Like hearing me say the shit that I'm saying, I can't even believe I got as personal as I did on some on those songs. I can't some of them because you know, with the exception of maybe like mood itself, but like the other three are probably like. You know, a little bit more personal, you know. Yeah, I can't do that. I can't. Beautiful, beautifully well put. And especially with that title from a glass house, because the viewers probably are curious and want to know that idea of that being, the you know, the title for the project and that approach for yourself. When you look at the protection of when it comes to an artist and what they're trying to build with their universe. When you came with the idea with, from a glass house, were you looking at it from a scope of someone that is trying to let people in? Or is it somewhere where you're trying to see yourself outside of? May, basically bringing together just this full conversation, the session of, as far as like in a sense, humbling yourself, if that makes sense. Like, were you trying to find a way to humble yourself, to mm -hmm. remind yourself? That was a good way. You, 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 you know? Yeah. I wouldn't have said it like that, but yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I think a, about that, because I think that's a beautiful way when you look yeah. at the cover and the reflection. And like you said, Because the, the those, cover's broken. Exactly. It's glass. Exactly. It's, it's glass broken. So yeah. definitely I'm curious of your answer, because I, I really just thought about that and I really wanted to know. Well, shout out, shout out Yaya. We gotta give him a shameless plug. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, he Mr. shot the cover of it. And Shout out to Mr. Y. I will leave his at as well. Incredible creative director. I'm yes. telling you guys, look out for him. But definitely shout out to Mr. Y. And because we're gonna go into talking about my upcoming projects, we have to because without, I can't say this next thing that I say unless we go into talking about. My next two, yeah, so my next two we're, projects. We're in part three of the yeah, universe. Yeah. We bring so, the universe. Maybe that's, that's, that's what we do. Because there's a lot of music coming. But that cover was taken in 2016. 2000, we're in 2020. This man held that cover for four years. I, was like, I didn't post like, that shit. Like, wait till I drop that shit. I never, he was like, wait. <laughs> I never posted that. I never posted that cover, that picture of me at all. Maybe one time. And I think I deleted it. But... I I don't, honestly don't remember you posting it. Yeah, I, I don't even think I maybe you probably posted that shit for like thirty seconds. Yeah, and it was yeah. going. <laughs> I might not have got as many likes. That one on person it as I got sad. It was like, damn, I really did fuck with that picture. Yeah, yeah like four years. To get it. I might have like deleted it, like just because it didn't get like a lot of likes on some light skin shit. But you know, I I really don't even remember posting it. But he did a we did a photo shoot, and um. The, re the, the reason why I used that cover, because I could have, I mean, I had so, bro, you know how many people, and this is so totally off subject, you know how many people hit me up and asked me if they if they wanted to do, um, to do like, a, a cover for me? That was offensive as hell, but I was like, no, because that's not, like, I don't give a fuck about the cover. The cover is real to me because it means, and no disrespect to people that watch this and be like, I was one of the motherfuckers that asked them. <laughs> you know, they I'm not, like, yeah, nah, nah, they, nah, nah it, I, I wasn't mad at them for saying it, but I, but if it looks, if it doesn't look perfect, there you go. There you go. It was not supposed to be perfect because what's perfect about a glass house? Not a damn thing. Like nothing is perfect about a glass house. So yeah, I tried to capture. I tried to capture that. But yes, all those things you said, I wouldn't have said it like that. But if I could put it in my own words, the glass house is me. I'm the glass house. It definitely comes off of the the title of it. Definitely plays off of the saying, "You never throw. You never should throw stones." Mm -hmm. In a glass house. <laughs> so, so I will definitely be playing like for for just for future 
you know, for future reference of me seeing this, and I gotta stand on my word, I'll be playing off of that because I am still deciding, this is real time, I'm saying this, if that EP will have a part two of it, but it won't be called From a Glass House Part Two. It'll be like something else, but it'll be the second story to it. Because again, it has to, be, but the project has to be created in like that time period. Like all that, like uh, shit has to be going on, whether it's good or bad, something has to be going on because at that at that time, and still right now, at, but specifically at that time I was creating it, I was, you you know, yeah. I that was, oh my God. Like I wasn't, if I didn't, if I was sleeping and I woke up and thought about something, I was listening to the beat and I was writing in my, you know, in my phone. But um, yeah, it's to represent imperfection. It's to represent, it's, and it's to help me be humble because there are a lot of things that I said on that song, or I mean, on that project, that should have let people know that I'm like, I'm a human being. I wanted people to get that. I'm not a human being. I'm not going to lie and say I'm fucking all these Johns and da, 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 da. Even though on some lines I did say that, but it's all goes referencing to my lady. But, you know, I'm not out here like lying about not being a dad. I'm proud as fuck that I'm a father. Like, that's why if you're here on Stone Age, um, I don't even remember the fuck what I said, but I just know the lines that I said about my son. I said, I hope my son, I hope my son become really than me because I do want him to become really than me. I want him to be a better version of me. Um, and if you see him, he looks like a second version of me. <laughs> but uh, it's scary, uh, yeah, it's to represent me. I can't really, I, you, you, exp you said it a little bit better. I, that's why I said I can't explain it. I wouldn't have said it like that. It's just simple as just saying from a glass house is just a simpler way of saying sincerely Trent, Trent Adams. If you understand what I'm trying to say, yeah. like sincerely, no, Trent I, I, I definitely like can. it's, it's sincerely Trey Stone that it's from a glass house is a clear cut version of me just saying sincerely Trey Stone. I just didn't want to say sincerely Trey Stone because that kind of just sounded corny. But from a glass house, um, if you want to start from song to song, Stone Age was I made that and it's all it's stories to all of these songs. Me and my um my son's mother uh were out <clears throat> and I was very angry when I made that song because I was tired of going again from a glass house going to a store going to stores and being on a not on a budget but just being cautious of what we do because we have responsibility. So I went home. We were at we were at Ross, and we bought all this shit. We still bought out. I mean, shout out to Ross. I mean, y'all motherfuckers be uh huh huh Ross. We were at Ross. <laughs> yeah, you know. And I, you know, cause I I I like dressing comfortable, um, cause I'm a bigger guy. But uh, cause I, you know, you get some of the best Nike shit at Ross and shit. And should, should, shit. Be, should be on point. Y'all y'all niggas be lying saying y'all ordering that for a Nike ID. You're not ordering that. I saw I saw that shirt in Ross, my nigga. It was twelve ninety nine. That's how much those Nike shirts cost. But anyway, we had like a cart. Like our cart was fucking full of like I'm telling you, this day we probably spent like two over two hundred dollars at Ross. Like that shit sounds abnormal. Might not sound abnormal, but, but when you paying rent and you you got car payments and you got a baby and you got a dog and you got responsibilities and you got things you want to do together, like yo, spending two hundred dollars on a bunch of clothes is not the smartest idea, realistically speaking. So I was mad as fuck, and I was like. I'm about to drop my rap shit when I go home. And I had the beat. I had the beat already. I already had the beat because I'm cool with a lot of producers. I don't know who, clearly I don't know the producer personally, but I, I either had the beat in like my likes or some shit, or I had it in my email. And I just heard that drum. I was just like, I mean that uh that guitar mm -hmm. and like that, that -na 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 -na, like, it just sounded like a big song, big beat. Like you cannot get on that and record anything 
fucked up. And as popular as the song is to a lot of people, like as much people would like it, because it's probably my most played song on Apple right now, streaming on iTunes, streaming on uh, Amazon Play, uh, Tidal, Spotify, we all over, global baby. Um, that's not my favorite song on that project. That was probably my least favorite song on the project for a while. And it probably still stands hand in hand with another song. But um, I wrote that in 15 minutes. I wrote that whole song in 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Like, I was writing a part. I wrote eight bars without the beat playing. Set it. Five minutes later, wrote like another eight bars. I believe the song, if I'm not mistaken, is like almost, is it almost three minutes or something? Yeah, like it's, it's not it too might long. be like a little. It's, it's, it's in the border part of three minutes, but it's, yeah. it's like still under. Because it might be more beat than than uh, bars, but I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of bars. I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm a whiz because I really don't know, but it's a lot of bars on there. But uh I wrote it in 15 minutes. Realistically speaking, I'll probably say probably like 15. I'll be fair and say 15 to 25. Regardless, I wrote it very quickly. Quicker than any other other the other songs that I had on the project. Um, yeah, definitely. Because the other, other songs took days to write at a point. Um, so, got to the studio. And it was, it was a beautiful studio session. Shout out my boy Galapo. Um, so... Recorded it and I, I I knew it was going to get the reaction it did, but you know <clears throat> after the no jumper the no jumper reaction like that was like that was really big for me because a lot of the, the numbers on that shit went up. Um, so shout out to shout out to that bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You gotta gotta acknowledge that flex, shit. I had, I had to acknowledge that shit for a second. You know, it's like, it's like, it's like oh, quick. you know, just no regular shit. You know, no jumper. Yeah. Said his, his shit was the best shit of the night, but you know <laughs> who's so, who's. But again, it's all about also also just humble brags. You know, a humble brag, just, just humble brags. very small, but still, small accomplishment. Still got to get the credit when it's due in As, front of the man. Yes. Especially when you're a fan of something and you do something like that. I'm not saying like that's something to brag about, but it's a like it's a you know it's a small accomplishment to me. But um, so to transition into the project, number two on the project will be my favorite song on the project. So at this point, I gotta give the biggest. The utmost like praise to the best goddamn producer in Tampa, motherfucking Florida, Delapo Inc. Bro. Delapo, August, all I can say, and this from everything, bro, it's one of my favorite songs of the year, bro. This thing right. is, 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 Here's a it, toast. It, it, We're gonna toast. It's, it's really a toast. We're gonna because, toast today. Because, like, I want people <laughs> to understand, like, I'm a big 2000s guy. I'm a big central dude. I love central music. I love music. Like, you know, the cliche word moody. I just love, I love music that's so centric that just, it puts me in this trance where it's not even having to feel sexual, but it's like very intimate. This song just reminds me of all the best things that I love about that quality. And it, it just really forward that foundation of showing again that transparency of like, wow, like, all the elements that you were blending through your old songs through SoundCloud, it's like this feels like the most mature version. Like it truly brings together that full circle of like, wow, like who would have thought? And and that's and that's what I think really interplays so beautifully with how the hook is constructed from the way you're approaching the subject matter and especially the transition with the with the chopping score. I'm a I'm a fucking sucker. He gonna laugh score. so fucking hard. Oh my god! When like that shit came in, I said, like, yeah. Ugh. Like, well, I tell like you, my chest, I was like, oh, yeah. He's, I was like, this shit is fucking amazing. The Rocco is one of, and I, I, I pray and <laughs> hope that at some point he had he has a Rocco session in him. Like, I pray. Listen, I put it into, I'm the into the existence. <laughs> he is one of the most, like, he's one of the most humblest dudes I've ever met. Like, I've learned so much from him. Shout out to my boy Femi. Shout out to my boy E. Shout out to my queen Samaya. Lil King uh, Brody. Shout out to the whole. Daddy look, Daddy Daycare. That's our that's our gang name because we all got kids in the same year. So, shout out to Daddy Daycare, um, bruh. Like he's one of the most humblest dudes. I've learned so much just from. Sometimes, bro. Sometimes we literally would go into a. I would go into a session, and think I was recording like three songs, and I would record one and just talk. We just talk. That's why we got a good foundation. But I met him through my boy, through my boy Finney. 
But the story of that shit is funny because he's going to laugh when I say this. This man does not like sampling music at all. He does not like <laughs> sampling. Finny, my boy Finny would tell me, he's like, dog, because we got a lot of, we got a lot of shit coming. I just want to put that in the air. Me and, me and Delapo are, we haven't even started yet. We haven't even I'm touched. About, I'm about to shake the room. We haven't even, we have not even <laughs> touched any surface on what we got coming. And it's, like I said, just be on the lookout and shout out, shout out to Delapo. But again, shout he, out to Delapo. So what happened was I was at the crib. I was at my, I was at my, uh, my old crib in Tampa and I was on my game or something. I was working out. I was on my game. There was this dickhead that lived in the neighborhood downstairs, like where my apartment was set up. You look downstairs, there's a bal there's like a screen balcony and this cat would literally just listen to old school music on Saturday mornings. Now, mind you, I had wanted the structure of this song already because I'm a big fan of like, of songs that have like samples as hooks i.e. like songs like you know Bryson Tiller he did like the inhale John and like just a lot there's a lot of songs like if you know songs that I'm talking about like like G Herbal Pull Up like shit like that like shit. like you don't even have to say anything on the hook it's just like that sample is so tough that it's just like you don't even gotta say a lot on it and I said nothing on mine so he played because the sample of it, if you guys want to go look at the original, if you're a geek like me, you want to know the sample. It's a Keith Sweat song that I had learned, I had not heard for like 15 years since I was I was a kid last time I heard it. I had to be like eight. So definitely 15 years ago, my dad used to play it. And the song was called Get Up On It. And the concept I got from it was wanting something so bad, but not being able to have it at the moment you want it. And that could be anything. So yes, the song is, and clearly I'm talking about a woman, but that, that you know, that kind of drive to get something can not just be more than, it, it, can be, it can be with a lot of different aspects. It can be with a job, on some everyday shit, because I like making music about people who do everyday shit too, like a job or like clearly a woman or money, like, because if you really want it, you're going to get up on that shit. So... I heard that shit and I kept listening to Cut Close. It's Keith Sweat, Cut Close, Get Up On It. And I just kept listening to her voice. And if you listen to the original song, it's like that that 90s fucking just, you just want to go into like a club. Bro, like we, I just kept listening to that sample. Called Delapo, told him, I said, bruh, I'm gonna send you this shit. And if it's one thing that man will tell you when it comes to production, especially when it comes to just me in general, when it comes to working with a producer, making a, pro a beat from scratch, I don't know how to make a beat, but I can tell you word for word. If I call this man right now and ask him, did, did I or did I not tell you how I wanted that beat to sound without even know, knowing that, like... That that's exactly how I told him I wanted it to sound. Structure and everything. The bridge raising it when I'm like, she she told me to put her whole body in danger. I told her to tell after all of the saddle. Like all that, like the bridge of it raising, and then like, bro, the chop and screw part. I don't even want to go into detail about that. But that song is that song exists just because of my my neighbor. That song exists because of my neighbor. So he, you know the dickhead. Well, the dickhead was shout actually out the shout dickhead. out to that dickhead. I don't even know his name, but I, the dickhead but he played '90s music all the time, and I just always like I knew I wanted a song like that, and I didn't even realize that I was gonna find it through him. But it's one of my it probably is my favorite song on the entire project. Short film coming soon. Um, who else is a personal song? That's you know. All relationships go through shit, bro. Like, as a man, like, with women, like, you, you go through shit. And it's not, a, it, 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 clearly, I would never make a song that is super, 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 like, personal to the point where, like, someone I'm with is being affected by it. But a lot of that came from a lot of things that we, we went through. And some things about what we go through and are going through, but, you know, it, it was... It was a self-reflection song because if you realize at the end of it, I'm saying that it's me to a certain degree too. But it's just, you know, 
I don't I don't want the person, anybody on this planet, if you're in a relationship, you don't want anybody to feel like there's anything out there better than you. At the end of the day, there are. There's more fish in the sea, somebody can do that. But you know what I'm saying? Like, if I know you better than you know yourself, who else you wanna find? Who who else you wanna put the time into to to have that? That shit takes years to make, bro. Like it takes years to make. And the relationship that I, the, the kind of relationship and friendship I have with my son's mom is, you know, no matter how much we go through, like, you know what I'm saying? Like that's, you know, I, no matter what happens between us at all, at any given point, we gotta remember we're parents and shit. So it's just like, she's always gonna be my best friend no matter what, but you know. So with going into mood, Mood was. Can I, can I just say since we're actually here, because I was I, I this was something I actually wanted to say about Stone Age too, where when I I'm somebody I like I'm a bit like I'm a big screenwriter mindset guy. I love the idea and the concept where songs can sound as far as like on a show, whether it's for like an end credits or whether it's for a scene. If I could describe all four of these songs. Stone Age sounds like the song you play at the at the end of an episode with a character with the camera just watching them in like the most fucking beautiful background, but you're acknowledging the power of that character and then that song comes on. Mm -hmm. Wanted, I'm gonna be real with y'all, is that song that comes on in a very beautiful sex scene. And then you You in the bedroom when I come on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then who else is the kind of also a song that can end off an episode, but in a way that the character feels confused, but the audience is not confused because they're aware of what is going on emotionally with that yeah. character. But then mood, mood is the song that, you know when you put out that teaser trailer and you're watching all this crazy shit and you're like, yo, I, I'm excited about the show, don't get me wrong, right. but this fucking song is setting the tone. That's mood. Mood feels like the song that can set the tone for like whatever you're about to watch. You're like, don't get me wrong, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. But this song is setting the tone. And that's what I want to, like, out of all those songs, because obviously we have our personal favorites, but for me, with Mood, the thing that I that I really, that, that for me, that I was taking a very heavy as far as, like, with a lot of the interpolations and a lot of, especially with what hit upon the mindset of that song, mm -hmm. the thing that I was curious that, that I, I really wanted to know is that for that song, was there, do you feel like there was a chip on your shoulder? Or like do you feel, or, yeah. you, or not only just that, do you feel like it was a statement? Say you a dog, but I just hear a lot of barking pops. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've been hearing Kirby chicks are sticking in some garlic knots. Talk to the wolves. Shit, you, talk listen to to the, that, you listen to that shit and I'm just God. sitting there like... I don't know, bro. He kind of sound like he put a body bag. Bro. Talk to the wolves. They said they had to move you off. You your know block. what they say, bro? They sound like a body bag. And my man was bro. letting out a body bag. Talk to the wolves. I'm a, uh, Come I'm on. A, uh, up north. I'm going for a north product. That is it, yeah. <laughs> Let me just say this. No, go cow. I got to say this. I'm a Garfield. Listen. I'm a Garfield of north product. Better than your average in here, harder than narcotics. That shit that you sell to keep it real, but we won't buy it. Try to fuck with me. It's my word, you will fall trying. <laughs> like, to really bro, add it, to I'm add not it, trying to be corny, like, but like, like, bro, whenever I hear that song, I'm like, I'm not even trying to be, like, blow my own, to my own horn. Like, that shit is undeniable. But be, but be honest, bro. You felt it in that moment, like, fuck. I'm gonna be honest with you in the like, studio. Fuck. I'm going to be honest with you. Again, this is something that Delapo can attest to. That song, we recorded that shit. I, don't, I think I stopped two times. I think I stopped two times to record it. I think I did like, I got to the, I think I got to the first hook and then I went straight to the last part of the song and that was it. And like we, I did ad libs on Stone Age. Like, <laughs> like that song, we, we didn't even like, we didn't even put, we didn't even put like, I, I promise you like it, it was effortless because there was a song that was on the project that did not live to see the light of day that I had to replace it with because it was an upbeat song. It didn't have the same cadence as a Stone Age or like a, any of the songs. It was more of like a, you in the South, so it had more of a Southern bounce, like not trying to sound like an old head, but like a juvenile, you know, 
we be in a henny on a hot shit, like that kind of bop to it, but that's not my sound. And again, from a glass house, yo, I had a lot of fucking songs, not a, not a lot, but I had some songs that I wrote and recorded on that project that honestly, if I put them out, I don't think people would have fucked with them from a glass house. Like I'm not just, I'm not going into a, a studio and recording a hit, like, you know, a song like as artists, upcoming artists, yo, we make mistakes. We we think we got it in this sound, but it don't work out for us. And I that was the I'm not even gonna say the name of the song, but I I, I knew that I knew that that was the one. I knew it was because I just kept I kept saying I need one. I need I need that tune to sound because if you go on my SoundCloud at I am Trey Stone, I believe on SoundCloud. I'm, I believe that's my link. Trey Stone on SoundCloud. We'll, um, we'll put the, that link. Put the link in there too. And shout out to DMX. I'm on DMX's uh, new mixtape on SoundCloud. Tra Ride with tracks, me. Track six, if I'm correct. Track six on volume tra four. Track six, volume four. For everybody that's confused about that project, like it's not nothing to be confused about. That's a beautiful platform for a bunch of artists to get numbers on. And he did it on some DJ drama. Like I love the way he did it. And my numbers, I just gotta get my numbers to go up, but I'm on DMX's new project as well. Um, if you go on my SoundCloud, I have a song called Crash, and it kinda is literally like that same kind of sound. It's like just that sample, like that that grunge. Yeah, like it's it's just that sound. And that that I'm telling you, like if I could if I could record a mixtape of that or a pro an album of that, I promise you, like it would be ridiculous but like that it, i don't even have a lot to say about that song it was fucking effortless it took two days to write but it was fucking effortless like when i recorded it oh my god it was like that was it we after that we did ad libs and then after that we started working on new material but man it all four of those so i'm i'm proud of i'm proud of that whole project man man i'm i mean that from the bottom of my heart like that, that I, I honestly i dropped it with without giving a fuck. When I dropped Tango and Cash, like I gave a fuck because I was scared as shit. But a lot of the, some, I got a lot of, you know, a lot of people were like, oh, this is him on his own. This is him like in a formal project. You know what I'm saying? But like this one, like it was just like, it, it really does kind of feel like my first project to a certain degree because it's my first project as Trey Stone. And I could not, I was talking all this shit for years about how how all you motherfuckers, most of you motherfuckers is trash. And I made sure that I came correct and I don't care what nobody says and the motherfucker gonna have to, to send me a link and for me to listen to it myself. That four songs is better than a lot of you motherfuckers 10 song, eight song, 12 song projects. And I'm saying that on no cocky shit. That's just facts. That I have, I, I'm, I'm, humble enough as I, like, like i said i'm humble enough to tell you if i don't believe my shit is good i just told you there were songs in that project that did not make it to see light of day now granted you are one of the people that heard some of those songs and you were one that liked them but you know me if i don't like it i'm not putting it out so it sounded trash to me i didn't put it i didn't put it out so bro from a glass house it's just like it's me. I can't tell you every single last move. The from the start of it, Stone Age, confidence. I'm a very confident person. Want it, drive. If I want something, I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna get up on that motherfucker. Who else? I have my dark days. I go through shit. And when it comes to love, we all go through shit. You're not alone in that. Move. <laughs> That's just my move. When I'm in that booth, that's how I feel. That's that song is represents how I feel when I'm when I'm when I go into a studio. That's how I feel. I just don't. I feel like I'm untouchable. Hey, amen, amen to that, bro. Just amen, amen to that. And this it's just it's just beautiful to see just the confidence in the artist and the art, and just seeing again the chemistry with your engineer and just with your producers, and really understanding how to build that concept, which now leads, of course to the main point of why we call this part the universe. Because now that from a glass house is, is what it is, the question is cliche, what's next? Mm, well, my next release will be, uh, it's a song that I have, it's called, uh, fuck, uh, Gotta Go. Shout out to 
Bear, shout out to ANRJ from Philly. Uh, shout out to my brother, my cousin, my blood cousin, Bear. Y'all already know who Bear is. I don't even have to say too much. RP to Woo, RP Pop Smoke. Um, I'm not gonna talk about it because it's not. But I can tell you right now, it don't sound like anything. It sounds nothing like anything on that project. It don't. It's it's. Yeah, I just gonna have to. Get it. <laughs> but after that, um, probably probably I'm gonna be working. Um, I'm hoping uh. As long as I get the clearance to with just the sounds, um, to drop another EP that has completely nothing to do with um, from a glass house. Just because I feel like EPs are a date that that's that's a game that I like working in. It doesn't affect your overall um, catalog, um, and it's going to be a free EP. It's not going to be the other ones are if you have streaming services, but. SoundCloud is like I believe that it's a great platform and I do great I do decent numbers for my for my fan base I do great decent numbers on SoundCloud. Um Hotel Toxic should be dropping soon. Uh that's gonna be a little bit more melodic. It's not gonna be uh too much, you know it's gonna be bars. This man can tell you himself that it's gonna be bars. Listen. <laughs> but it's uh it's definitely it's definitely going to be more, a little bit more melodic. Um, and after my EP, uh, hopefully first quarter of 2021, man, what's the rush is coming out. And if like, I, I, I do hope that I can influence you guys to go listen to Tango and Cash volume one when I was under a different alias. Um, we can put the link in the bio for this yeah, one as well. Because I definitely got, I definitely want people to listen to that because if you listen to the outro, the last thing that my brother did say on that project was what's the rush. We've had that name since 2015 that's that was my next project but you know i had to grow but what's the rush that's i don't know what to call it i don't know i can't call it an ep because it's going to be longer i'm not definitely not calling an album and i don't want to disrespect anybody on this on this podcast on this um broccoli session right now but i want to tell all of you right I, I now i know what you're i know what you're gonna say and we have no business. I, I, I get the concept of it, bro, but it just doesn't make sense. Like, bro, like, don't call it an album. It's a project. Like, y'all don't want that shit to stain your your up your 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 ascension. I'm telling you, like, that shit is I don't know why motherfuckers do listen, it's off subject. Do what y'all do, but I'm not dropping an album if I'm not getting a mill. I'm not I'm not drop I, I have the confidence to drop an album and feel like I will get compensated for it, but I'm I'm not like I'm not impulsive with an album. The album, the first album that I've been waiting my whole entire life to make, and I'm not making it until it's time to. I'm gonna, bro. My album, my first album is going to be a classic, and I'm saying that on here right now. But I'm not in no rush to make an album. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> but what's the rush is my next project though. That's my that's my next full body length, over thirty minute project. Like that's. Man, I don't nah. <laughs> I can't say too much about it because I can't spill the beans on some shit. But there will be there will be features on it. We're gonna try to get some. I, I am I'm I'm not trying to disrespect. Again, I'm an upcoming artist as well. But we going for the bank on that no, one. But y'all, but y'all see it all like. Gotta yeah. build the suspense. Yeah. You gotta build the suspense. We, we gonna we gonna we we gonna try. Um. Shout out to all the people that support me within, like my, you know, my support system. You know, my my brother <clears throat> P and M. Shout out to um, my boy Chuck. Shout out Charles. You know, he he definitely he's definitely you know part of this uh, part of this situation as well because we're not going into it with me representing myself as an artist. It's a business because again, like. The music industry, as you motherfuckers can see, y'all motherfuckers ain't getting rich from it no more. You gotta start thinking bigger and better. But um, yeah, what's the rush, bro? That's that's after the, uh, um videos, music videos. Uh, I I can tell you right now that all four songs will have some. Hopefully, all four songs, if not all four, at least at the very least three of those songs will have visuals. Um, videos uh and more videos for songs that I'm gonna be loosely releasing but 2021 my biggest like 
goal that I have to like put the work in to do is what's the rush. And oh man, I don't think they I don't know. Uh that it's take it's took me five years to make it. You know what I'm saying? Like I and the ideas that I have on it that are already being worked on right now, like you know what I'm saying? Like it's not it's it's different, but it's gonna be, you know, I hope I, I'm hoping and praying that it's one for the books. I hope that it it really does put that mark. And going back to something before we, you know, before we end this, something you said about Jersey. Jersey doesn't have a sound. And if it's not one thing that I did on that EP, I don't think I showed I I, I do think I represented Jersey in a great light. We don't have a sound. We are outsiders. We have the ability to take and not copy and not paste, even though a lot of you motherfuckers are doing that. We have the ability to take, be inspired from different regions and make it our own gumbo pot. Um, I personally don't think I, personally don't think I sound like anybody, but I sound like I'm from Jersey. I talk loud. I raise my voice for no reason. I don't pronounce uh, certain words right, but... I make it sound good, and I do feel like I'm. I'm not even. I don't even do feel. I'm the. I'm the most authentic artist from New Jersey. I say that with all, with no disrespect to anybody who believes they're and authentic. That actually leads to the final question because I think I think we're gonna end this off on a very great note. The last question is just like all off the table, you know, because obviously the whole idea is being professional and shit, mm -hmm. but. To just to just really leave leave it there because I love that you mentioned Jersey and just seeing the confidence in yourself. I I know for some people this is a scary question, but you don't you don't fear shit. Trey don't fear answers. I fear God, <laughs> jail, and death. <laughs> well, no, I don't fear death. I don't fear death. Death is present. But 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 the question I want to ask is because it's it's a cliche question, but I think it is an important question. Mm -hmm. What do you want your legacy to be left on as far as the mark on Jersey and even bigger? And how do you think that even our current artists now with their approach, how do you think they can at least whether they take from this video or take from your music, what can they take as far as their approach as well to what they as well can be trying to aim for as far as leaving a mark on Jersey as well. And how can they build on that foundation? Let me say this with full disclosure that I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm not trying to talk it's, like it's, I'm that listen, nigga. We, we hear, but we're we talking about sheer courses, fucking <laughs> talent. We're talking about sheer talent. We're not talking about clout because clout ain't paying y'all fucking bills, which is why y'all got bitches throwing y'all out the crib with trash bags with y'all Xboxes in it. No <laughs> but anyway... We talk about sheer talent, and I'm not saying that any. It's a, it's yo, it's a clusterfuck of talented artists in New Jersey. I'm one of them, though, and the best one. <laughs> but um, to answer your question, to answer your question though, um, my legacy in Jersey is to just like I just said, there's no sound for Jersey. I think motherfuckers just need to. We're outsiders. Our sound needs to be that we take chances. Our sound needs to be that we we don't we have no boundaries. We have no 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 we're not on a script. It's not like, you know, like you hear other you going to hear elements of other cities, of course. Like there's like you can hear elements of Atlanta and LA, LA and Atlanta, New York and Atlanta, of course now. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like elements of fucking like Canada. Like we got to stop talking like Canada ain't one of them regions like Canada takes from New York. New York takes from Canada. Hell, New York is, they were turned, they're, you know, not to discredit them, but like drill in New York is different, but we got to acknowledge the fact that New York drill sounds a lot like you, the UK. It's, and we got to give people like designer his credit because he's, to me, he kind of started that shit because that Panda beat was made by, like, you know, that the structure of it, you know what I'm saying? Not to go off on the subject, but that was like the start of all the things that we have going on now. But the Jersey sound, if it's a legacy that personally I want to have, 
that I was a that I was a Jersey artist because I don't I don't feel like I've in my past have made that clear enough. But I'm a Jersey artist, like like I'm a up north Gar like what did I say I'm a um, up north Garfield North product like that like I'm bro I was raised in Garfield North like I'm not but I'm not repping you know the the negative aspect of what G North stands for you know what I'm saying like I also grew up in Holbrook like um, on Hawthorne Lane you know what I'm saying like I lived in Penny Packer like but I'm not but my the city that I grew up in you know what I'm saying like we got an image on us but we also have to realize that we don't want to limit ourselves to one specific sound that's what our sound is to be because I feel like that's not a that's not a um an avenue that other cities select cities that are popping right now that are getting the notoriety for having a sound do they have a structured sound not discrediting saying that they sound alike but they have a sound we don't have a sound we need to take that and push that shit above you know with the sky's the limit with that like we could make something great but also we need to show more camaraderie as well we need to stop acting like if you motherfuckers is not signed if you motherfuckers is not getting money Y'all have no, like, we need to stop with the charge and shit as far as music goes. I'm not telling creators that do, that have to buy film and all that shit, but I own, I have studio equipment. I, you know, maybe not be the best, but I have studio equipment I can work with. Unless I'm going to a motherfucking studio, like, no artist needs to be hitting me up, giving me rates. You don't have more followers than me, bro. Why are you, you know what I'm saying? Like, they, we need to get that, that. That's another thing we need to work on. We need to humble ourselves. We really need to humble ourselves. And I'm not speaking for everyone. So for anyone that has a problem with what I'm saying right now, you can come talk to me because I'm not trying to talk cocky. I'm just telling you, like, that is why I, I, I personally feel like that's our, we are our biggest enemy. We need to humble ourselves. We need to work together. Like all these motherfuckers from Atlanta, New York, LA are doing all they do is support each other. I feel like we are one of the only cities that have a name Queen Latifah, Red Man, all kinds of legends from here. But we don't get that look because we are our own competition, and that's not how that shit should be. Again, it, it's a great breeding ground, but when it but when it it's a great breeding ground to have competition within your within your own city, but it's once it's egos involved, that's when it's over. So my legacy, I want to bridge the gap. I want to make it so motherfuckers realize that like no matter how popping you get, no matter how many numbers you get, at the end of the day, we if we come from the same city, we need to treat each other like we come from the same city. We need to stop waiting until motherfuckers get ten thousand followers and a thousand likes on a post to go reach out to them and say, "Yo, I fuck with your shit." Yo, bro, you breathe just like I breathe. If you fuck with my shit, tell me you fuck with my shit. If I don't like your shit, I'm going to tell you. But if we from Jersey, yo, let's work with each other. Because I think you got to work on this. But you might have something that I need to work on. It's bridging the gap. But for my legacy in general, I'm going to be the... I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to be a motherfucking legend when it comes to Jersey sound. What, what, what was that shit that he said? I'm going to be... On who else, what was that line you said on who else? I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see if he knows what I'm talking about. Huh? Uh, oh, he knows what I'm uh, talking about. <laughs> he um, said, "Wait, um, um, but when it, uh, um, oh, fuck, what was the word? You, fuck. Know, you know what I'm? You know what the line, bro? You know the bar, huh? My ascension, I refuse the force, but when it happens, I promise I'm gonna be that fucking one. <laughs> you fucking yeah. Do. Yeah, that's true. Like I'm gonna be that fucking one because I'm, and and again, I'm I'm gonna be that one because I'm not trying to be nobody but me. I'm not trying to be a tough guy. Fuck are you tough guys getting out of trying to be hard? The fuck you got a you got a soft spot, nigga. Chill out. T put your shoulders down. Un loosen your arms. You all right? Oh, okay. You just might have a headache. Drink some water. Drink a gallon of damn water. You'll be all right. But. Like, come on, bro. Like, all that all that tough guy shit. Like, yo, like, yo, they ain't stopped making guns when they made yours. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to we gotta, we gotta get that out of our head. Like, we don't, we are our biggest competitors. But it's all love to Jersey artists. Everybody from Jersey, we need to do that. We all got to start sharing love. And I believe that's why this platform is great. Because what you're doing 
is you're giving the awareness to Jersey artists that there might be like an artist like me that creates like me that's going to reach out to me now. When you have your next guest, they're same thing for to him or her. Like we're all creators. Let's create. Period. You know what I'm saying? But I want to give a shout out to Woman Bro, New Jersey. I want to give a shout out to Delran, New Jersey. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to give a shout out to Collinswood, New Jersey. You know, I've been around. I've been I've been around. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, our our Peter Pop smoke. You know what I'm saying? Peter Pop, man. He's, he was out here. And motherfuckers know. If you know, you know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's, on a personal tip, I also want to say to my, you know, to my old to my OG, to one of my big brothers, RIP Hefe, Jeff, J Swag. I just want to give a big RIP to him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, God bless his family and all them. But like I said, bro, it's just about bridging the gap. As Jersey, bro, we got to stand as one. And if we're not going to stand as one, you're looking at the one. Of course, for everybody out there that tuned in, thank you so much for tuning in. Long time fucking coming, long, bro. Long, long time coming. This was years in the making. And we, and I wanted to wait because he because he probably knew it's gonna come. This idea flourished itself because this guy right here, we had a phone call conversation. He was the one. Why kind of hinted but he was the one that really inspired the idea and it was like, bro, you need to take that Rocco session. So that's why it was only fitting that my first guest, because I told him, I told him you were gonna be the first. And we spoke this years ago, years ago, but here we are. And that's the beauty of life. But don't think this is the last, you know, hint, hint. But again, thank you guys for everyone that tuned in. It really, truly means a lot, even if it wasn't the most. This is just the beginning. This is a pilot, but it's a great opportunity. And I hope this can be something that builds on that we can just create these moments. And especially, you know, for myself, I think this is a great opportunity for myself to grow deeper, of course, with my friend, my brother here. And I think it's just... It's just beautiful to take nights like this and really just appreciate life, appreciate these moments, but as well as those those gems that were dropped in there, because I hope, I hope if anything, that you got some gems from there and it inspires. And especially as well that, you know, whether, whether if, you know, if, if this guy right here might, might have just, you know, pushed you to want to listen to that music or feel, feel me, you know. Hey, <laughs> before you finish, let me give a shout out to my son. Merry Christmas to my son. I love you, baby. I'll be there soon. Um, let me give a shout out to all Jersey artists. Let me give a shout out to all Tampa, Tampa artists. Let me give a shout out to all the LA artists, New York artists, all around the motherfucking world, bro. Spread love. But shameless motherfucking plug from a Glass House EP is on all streaming platforms. All streaming platforms, bro. All streaming platforms. Tap into that shit. Get them numbers up. Let's get them numbers up. We ended the night. We end, We ended the year off way f at a great, greater point than I thought I was going to end it off. I just got to, you know, that's just me. You know, sometimes I got to have a little bit more confidence. That's how what's what happens when you live in a glass house. But shameless motherfucking plug. Hotel Toxic, the EP, will be dropping soon. Gotta go featuring Bear and A&R motherfucking J on that hook, bro. That shit is dropping soon. My full length studio project, What's the Rush, will be dropping 2021. 2021. That will be my next, that will be my first studio length like project on Apple with stri all streaming services. You know what I'm saying? It's just going to, you know, I'm starting from the ground up. So it's going to take a little bit more time, you know, with the, you know, budgets and shit. You know, we got to, you know, we got to hustle. We got to grind to get that shit out. We got to get that shit pushing. Um, but just follow me on Instagram. I am Trey Stone. Twitter, I am Trey Stone. I'm not giving y'all my Snapchat. Fuck y'all. Y'all not going to be a part of my personal life. Um, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know, just... Continue to support me all to all my fans, to everybody that listens to my music, and for all the haters that are watching this and that I, that might that you know might feel the way about some of this the shit. Haters I said, that sat through the damn near length of this video. <laughs> listen, thank you for pre you know thank you for all the support to my to my to my to my little stone to my to my little stoners. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I ain't call them stoners. I'm not gonna call them stoners, but I'm pretty sure the majority of the people that listen to my music like to get high. But um. Yo, 
Shout out, y'all. I appreciate y'all. We really did. I say we because I couldn't have did this shit without y'all. I couldn't have did this shit without my brother, Delapo. I will give y'all another shameless plug on top of Hotel Toxic in 2021 because it was supposed to come out this year, but I got to push the date back. On top of music videos dropping in 2021. On, on top. What's the rush? Drop this in 2021. Me and the Lapa will be doing a joint project in 2021. Heard that shit here, bro. Heard that shit right here. I have one, two, three projects that I'm that I know for a fact that I'm dropping in 2021. Whether you give a fuck about that or not, I don't care. It's gonna be better than this shit. <laughs> so, we get in out on a bang, dog. I appreciate it. Bang. Just I'm gonna put you in a message. 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 Show a lot of show a lot of love, of course, and as and as always, this is the beginning. But just know it's not the end. So again, it's an honor, of course, my, my guy. It was great, of course, to have this start. So thank you guys again so much. And of course, as yours truly, Paraco session. We come to the end, end of this journey, and this chapter, the next chapter. Boom, the top, baby.